Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I'm Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today I've got the first podcast episode of 2024 for you. Today is January 14th, uh, I'm... <laughs> kind of annoyed and surprised uh, that I've put off doing a normal podcast episode for this long into the new year for you. I feel a little bit bad, especially because I have a lot to update you on, but there have been a lot of videos coming out on my channel kind of summing up, summarizing 2023, talking through my goals for 2024, so I wanted to make sure I did get a lot of those out, bef like kind of closer to the new year. Um, there's a couple more videos that I want to make. I would like to make my Everything I Knit in 2023 video. That's just like a very daunting video to make. <laughs> it's a lot of work trying everything on and it's a lot of work editing it and uh, yeah it's still on my list so hopefully I can get that out to you uh, sometime in January. But today like I said, I've got a regular podcast episode coming out for you. So we've got a lot to discuss. I've got a finished object that you may have noticed. Um, and we're gonna I'm gonna update you on my sweet shop blanket. And I've got um two new cast-ons that you've never seen. And some swatches and potential future cast-ons that we've got to talk about. So buckle up and let's get into it. Let whoop, I'm trying to get my journal out here. Let's start with what I'm wearing. My first finished object of 2023. And yes, I did cast this on. I said oh my gosh. First finished object of 2024 that I cast on in 2023. So the uh, typical details. This is the Stick Season Sweater by Rebecca Klo of the Crea Bea. And the yarn that I used for this is Red Door Fiber Studio. Actually, hold on. I've got one skein left over, a full skein. So this, the yarn that I use for this is Red Door Fiber Studio uh, right here in her classic DK base. It's 100% superwash merino and the colorway is nonsense. This was from her D&D, uh, &D, was it D&D? Yeah, D&D &D club uh, in 2023. So you can see it's this like brick red, almost brown tonal color. Um, and here's what it looks like in the sweater. I've got a, uh, some finished object photos, so I'll put those up while I talk through everything so that you can see a full body view of this. But basically when I was in Ireland in October, this, um, pattern was like in testing and I had seen so much of it on Rebecca the Crayabea's podcast and I had seen everyone who was testing it and I really really wanted to cast it on. I was like as soon as I get home, well actually as soon as the pattern comes out because it came out in November, um, like that is the next cast on that I want to cast on. And I did, I actually cast this on the day it came out on November 3rd and I finished it on January 6th. Typically, sweaters do not take me that long to complete. That's almost two months that this was on the needles, but this was on the needles during December, and there was a lot going on in December with um, gift knitting for the holidays and vlogmas. Um, I filmed almost every day in December and I was really focusing on opening up my advents and adding them to my sweet shop blanket that I'll talk to you about in a little bit. So I didn't have a lot of time to like put into this sweater uh, so it, it got put on the back burner a little bit and I didn't get it finished until the very beginning of January which that's okay. Um, but let me tell you a little bit more just of the stats. So 
the size that I knit, I knit the size 6. I'm about a 40 to 42 inch bust and I am a tighter knitter. I typically have to go up a needle size. So I knit this on a 4.5 millimeter needle. Um, all of the body was knit on a 4.5 millimeter and the ribbing was knit on a 4 millimeter. I'm pretty sure I knit the top portion here um, because all of this texture is just a one by one rib texture. I'm pretty sure I knit all of this on the four millimeter. I'm trying to see if, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I didn't write it down. I got pretty lax in my like note taking in my <laughs> journal towards the end of the year and uh, I'm trying at this point to get better at it going into the new year like every needle size that I use all of that stuff but anyways I'm pretty sure I knit the texture on four millimeter the two by two rib details I'm pretty sure I knit on the four millimeter and then the stockinette is what I knit on the 4.5 millimeter needle so what I like about this sweater I love the texture I think it's really fun it does stop uh, right where you split for sleeves and so then the rest of the body is just plain stockinette and it's got these really cool details on the edge of the yoke so it's like a two by two rib detail here and it's on the back as well so this shoulder seam and then you can see it goes down it comes across and it actually comes all the way down to meet here uh, on the side of the body which is really cool I think and then it runs straight into you can see the two by two ribbing on the bottom the bottom hem of the body there so I really like those details um, when I look at the fit of this this is one of those sweaters that for me grew a bit when I blocked it because I'm using a superwash merino yarn and in my case I was actually really happy with the growth. Um, so I'll show you the photo, I can show you a side by side of what it looked like uh, fitting on me before blocking and then after blocking. And before blocking, just to give you some of the measurements, the body length from the underarm, so from from here to the bottom was 11.5 inches post blocking it was 10 inches so you might be saying okay well how did you lose an inch and a half well I really wanted to stretch the width of this because when I first tried it on pre blocking I was like I really want it to be a little bit more oversized so while it was wet after soaking I really stretched it width wise versus lengthwise because I, I knew I would be fine if I lost a little bit of length to gain that extra width which I did the body width before when I measured it was 22 inches across so if we multiply that to that's about multiply it by two that's about a 44 inch circumference so for me that was about two to three inches of positive ease post blocking I measured it 24 and a quarter inches so times two is about 48 and a half inches or six and a half to seven and a half inches of positive ease which just for me personally I'm much more comfortable with it being a little bit more oversized and having that seven to eight inches of positive ease so I'm really happy with it. Additionally before I blocked it <laughs> I thought I had knit the sleeves to be long enough like when I first tried on I had knit the top, I had knit the whole body, I knit the collar, and when I was knitting the first sleeve, I had tried it on, and I, you know, at the point where I finished the decreases, I was like, okay, I need to knit, you know, this much extra, and then we'll do a couple inches of ribbing, and I measured it out, and it, I thought I had measured it to come down to, like, over my hand, so that I could make sure that the sleeves were long enough. A huge issue I had with my knits at the very beginning of last year was that I was not knitting the sleeves long enough and I had to go back 
uh, in the middle of the year and like add length to them so that I would actually wear them <laughs> this winter, uh, which I did and it was fine. But I was like, let's do it right the first time and knit the sleeves to be long enough. So I thought I did, but what happened was I think with only one sleeve attached, the whole sweater was kind of like skewing this way. So when I measured it, the one sleeve, it was like measuring longer than where it's actually sitting now that I have two sleeves. So that's something for me and maybe for you to keep in mind uh, is maybe just don't, maybe what I'm going to do is not bind off like the first sleeve until I finish most of the way on the second sleeve and then I can determine if I actually like that length. Now again, because this is super wash yarn, I like really stretched the sleeves while blocking to try and gain some length out of them and I did get a couple inches. So uh, the sleeve length before blocking was about 18 and a half inches and after blocking is about 20 and a quarter inches. So I got about an inch, what is that, an inch and a quarter, an inch and three quarters, I don't really know, <laughs> something around there, I'm not using my mental math brain right now, um, but, you know, just wearing it normally, the sleeves are like a decent length, they're not all the way up here at like a bracelet length, where I wouldn't enjoy that, so, I'm okay with the length of them, the one thing about the sleeves, I will say, is I do wish they were, they're for me, pretty like skin tight. Um, I do prefer to have a little bit more ease in my sleeves. So that is just something for me to think about. And I am glad that I have this whole extra skein because if I want to at some point go back and add some more stitches to the sleeve, I know that I can rip them out. I did originally a, a pickup rate of every two, two stitches for every three stitches, so I picked up two and then skipped one, pick up two and then skip one. I could very easily, I think, do a three out of four pickup rate where I pick up three stitches and then skip one, three stitches, skip one. And that would give me, you know, a few more stitches extra around the sleeve. And then I could decrease the <laughs> or I guess I can increase the decrease rate so that I'm not decreasing the number of stitches as rapidly as is called for in the pattern. Um, I can do it a little bit more gradually. Just Amazon, I think. Um, just so that, oh, I wonder if that's my new vacuum. Looks like it. There's a big, oh, there's another box. I forget what I was saying, but I think uh, that would just give me a sleeve that I'm more comfortable with and that I prefer wearing. So that is something that I might do in the future. I'm gonna add like a two fix or like refresh page in my journal, um, just so like as I'm wearing my knits, if there's something that I want to refresh or redo. So like for the, for instance, I'm gonna like write down maybe fix, fix my stick season sleeves. Uh, and then we'll go from there. I just want to say that it's totally a personal preference. Like I know a lot of you are going to look at my sleeves and be like, they look totally fine. They look amazing. Why would you redo them? And again, just a personal preference thing. So, but anyways, it's my finished cheek season sweater. I'm so glad that it's off the needles. I was like really getting tired of having it on the needles. Um, I was just like over looking at this color. Not to say that it's a bad color, but you know when you just like look at something for way too long and you're just like, I can't look at this anymore. I need to look at something else. That's how I was feeling about this. And so at this point, um, I can just wear it when I'm ready to look at this color again. I did wear this to the office last week. This was my emotional support sweater when I had to go in one day and have like a bunch of really hard meetings. So <laughs> yay. But um, it's a little warm in here. My husband's been running the heater all day. So I'm going to switch into uh, a t-shirt and we're going to talk about my whips. So all right, did that work? I don't know. Look at my cute knitting queen t-shirt. I got this for Christmas. This was in my um, uh, gift like guide for knitters video. I had a couple of like t-shirts, knitting related t-shirts from Etsy and I got this one uh, for Christmas. I'd put on my list. My mom got it for me 
and my cousin got me um like a knitter tarot card t-shirt i'll wear that on one of my future episodes and it's super cute and i love it this i like this because um like all the different colors in this text like first of all are like very cohesive but it also means that like this t-shirt can go with a lot of different colors in terms of like cardigans so i've been wearing my green cal cardigan with this and like even though there's no green i think it really picks up the blue and that's really nice and if i had like a red cardigan this would be nice a pink one whatever um it's really cute i'll have the link in the description box below if it's still available on etsy so let's talk through actually let's talk through my sweet shop blanket first since i know you have seen this before it's looking really good i'm excited about it and here it is <laughs> i don't even know if you can see all of it but it's looking really good i've got a photo again i think i have a photo I'll take a photo if I don't have one and put it up so you can see the whole thing and how it's looking right now. I have gotten through all of the purple section. So the way I'm talking about this and like thinking about it in my head is, um, oh, hold on, back up. This is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose and the yarn that I'm using for this is two 2023 advent calendars. The first one is from Hedgehog Fibers. These, That's all the uh, variegated squares are my Hedgehog Fibers and all of the solid tonal squares are from Botanical Yarn. And the Botanical Yarn was basically a fade starting with yellow moving into like greens and well not really green sort of green and blue into purple and lastly into pink so the way i'm thinking about this is um in terms of the botanical yarn colorways what i did was the first like good chunk of squares that i had knit up if you missed all of this from my vlogmas um I was opening them and like the first day I had no idea that this was what the, these yarns were going to be but I looked at them and I was like oh these two colorways actually go really nice together what if I use them in a blanket together because I knew the botanical yarn was very likely going to be like these solid colors and the hedgehog fiber were going to be variegated so I was like they'll work really well together like together as squares so the very first day is when I started this sweet shop blanket um and so the first like good chunk of colors i just opened them and started using them together and i was really excited about it and then i was out of town for a weekend in december so i missed opening them i missed putting them in my blankets and so i took a little bit of a break and i came back and i was like i'm gonna open the entire advent calendar <laughs> And I'm going to pair up these minis from the two calendars into cohesive pairs that I can use for the rest of the blanket. So that's what I did. I put them in like a rainbow-ish fade order uh, based on the botanical yarn colorways. So at this point now, I have added all of the purples into my blanket. See, purple... Here's a blue, purple, and purple. So next up are the last seven pairs, I believe, that are all pinks. And so all of the pinks are gonna, you know, go across again, filling out um, the first half of this blanket. And then what I'm going to do is I've got about 12 grams left of each of these 20 gram mini skeins so i'm basically going to double the blanket complete the second half of it uh using the um botanical yarn solid minis in as close to the same pattern on the other side of the uh, diagonal and then the hedgehog fibers minis may have like a little bit of a switch up 
just because I obviously didn't keep them in their pairs, but I'm gonna try and grab, you know, ones that look good together uh, and finish the second half. So, this week I'm going to uh, plan out the order that I want the pinks to go in and I'm gonna get started on that. So, I'm loving this project. It's like a huge dose of color therapy. Just every time I look at it, it's so colorful. There are garter stitch squares, so they're super squishy and super easy to knit. If you're looking for a good blanket um, and a project that will really help you learn and master short rows and picking up stitches, this is a great blanket pattern for you. Um, each of the squares you knit fully attached, so you're picking up stitches is the very first thing you do, and then you're knitting like this in short rows for the first half of the square, and then you're doing decreases in the second color for the second half of the square. So a lot of fun, interesting, and cool techniques in this pattern and I would really recommend it. So that's where we're at with the Sweet Shop Blanket. It's grown so much since uh, I last showed it to you on Vlogmas. I remember the, you know, day four of December when I just had these four little yellow squares. Oh, that was such a fun time. <laughs> and now we've got so much. So there you go. There's the update on the Sweet Shop Blanket for you. And let me just fold it up here. I'm keeping my blanket and just some notions. I've got my needles in here, some scissors, and uh, some notions. This is a tin from Kimber's Cozy Creations, which I'm now an affiliate with them. And so this was gifted to me, but... I didn't even know she had these. They're super cool. You open it up and it's got uh, tapestry needles that are magneted to the top, which is amazing, so you don't lose them. It's got a bag of light bulb stitch markers. There's a tape measure in here, and then these folded up scissors, which is amazing. This is the perfect like little kit to throw in a project bag so you've got everything you need in one place. Um, I forgot there were scissors in there so I've just been <laughs> using these ones. But I'm keeping this all in my uh, this project bag that I got from the SoCal Fiber Fair from a company called A Needle Runs Through It. And I love this bag. It's almost like neoprene fabric but I love the design. It's super thick. I actually really like zippered project bags so that I know nothing is going to fall out of it, especially if I'm like, you know, carrying it around everywhere. And it's got a nice little handle so that I can take it everywhere I need to go. And then when I'm finished with the first ball of yarn, I've been putting it in this bag. And I'm excited for when I get to the second half and I can just start pulling them out of there. And at that point, I think I'll probably have only like one to two grams left over at the end for all of the little balls. And so we'll see at that point what I use them for. I don't know what, what I'm going to do, but we'll see. Okay, let's move on to one of two whips that you haven't seen yet. Um, and I made a a good amount of progress on this first one. So the first one that I'm going to show you is a second Cal cardigan. And here's where I am so far. It's kind of hard to, to see. But I already showed this to you today. This is what it will look like. This is my green cal cardigan that I made last year. So this is, again, the cal cardigan by Claire Jackson. She's at Perfectly Knotted on Instagram. And the yarn that I'm using for this is Bella Filato Studio in her Bella Worsted Base. Again, this is a 100% superwash merino base in the colorway Cozy Flannel. I love this colorway. It's like a pink variegated color. When you knit it up, it kind of does have that like flannel feel to it. This was, um, I got, I had, blah, blah, blah. I bought one of these skeins 
the very first time it came out, I think in 2021. And I knit a pair of worsted weight socks. I think they're called the Comfort Socks by Ozetta. And I loved this colorway so much. At the time, I was like, I should have got a sweater quantity of this. And then last year, Gwen from Bella Filato Studio had five skeins of this that she was de-stashing at a discounted price and I snatched them up. I was like, oh my gosh, this is my chance, my last chance probably to get cozy flannel in a sweater quantity. And when I knit up the Cal Cardigan the first time, I only used five skeins of worsted weight. And so I was like, it was meant to be. I know exactly what I can make with this yarn. And I've been wanting another cardigan uh, because I wear this one literally all the time. I finished this in August and this was my second most worn knit in 2023. So I wore this almost as many times between the end of August and December as I wore my most worn knit, which was my clove sweater that I had finished in 2022, like the whole year. So that tells you how much I wore it. And I want to knit a, a couple more cardigans this year because they're just so versatile. So anyways, this is where I'm at so far. The construction of this is super interesting and it's kind of fun. So you can see kind of what this looks like, where it's at now. You actually start knitting here and this is actually like picked up. So you start with this portion like this and this is like 11 stitches of brioche. You pick it up, pick up stitches and knit this side and then you pick up the back stockinette piece and you start knitting out from there. There are two sort of raglan lines. They're not really raglan. These are actually the uh, seams that sit on your back shoulder. And these um, increase points are also in a brioche texture. Um, this was the first time when I did the first cardigan that I had ever knit brioche. And it's a really nice intro because it's only 11 stitches. Amazon again? Oh, no, that's Joel getting the Amazon boxes. <laughs> okay, anyways, it's a really nice intro to brioche because it's 11 stitches on one side. You've got like three stitches here for the seam, and then you do it again. Three more stitches, and then 11. And so if you mess up, it's very easy to like tink back because it's only 11 stitches. Another thing that I love about this is you're knitting the button band at the same time as the rest of the garment, so I'm not going to have to go back at the end and pick up stitches for a whole button band. That's always really daunting and like takes so long, I feel like. Um, and at this point where I'm at now, I'm at the point where I'm going to split for the different panels, so I'm going to... Knit, start knitting the back panel by itself and start knitting the front two panels by themselves. Let me see if I can kind of give you a visual of how this is going to sit. Let's just look here. So these lines are going to sit right on the shoulder. Again, I'm using Superwash Merino yarn, so this will stretch a little bit when I block it. And when I've got the rest of the knit on, it's going to, you know, just from gravity stretch out a bit. So at this point, I'm going to start knitting the front by itself, the back by itself. And um, that's going to help me knit for my armhole depth, and then I will join in the round. So I know it looks a little funny and like kind of confusing when you just look at this. You're like, what is going on? But I think when you try it on... Uh, or when I show it that way and when I hold it like this, it makes a little more sense that this is the top portion of it. But it's going really well. I'm really happy with it. Oh, I wanted to do something. Hold on. I just went to go grab my bowl of Progress Keepers. Um, I had a friend, Sarah, who I met at the SoCal Fiber Fair. Hi, Sarah. I know you're watching. And she sent me like 
so many <laughs> progress keepers that she makes and I put all of my favorite ones in this bowl and I'm going to start uh, tracking for you my progress uh, between podcast episodes so we can see how far I've knit between podcast episodes. So the next uh, instruction on this I think is to knit the one of the front panels. So I'm gonna put two progress keepers on here. Let's pick some fun ones. Let's see, okay, I'm gonna pick this balloon. It's a hot air balloon. She sent me this one because it's a hot air balloon. She sent me this one because I have, uh, I live in a city where there's a lot of hot air balloons, which is, Perfect. So I'm gonna stick this right on the 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 right front side, and then I'm gonna also gonna put one on the left front side. So there's a lot of Christmas ones in here. <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna put my this one is a mermaid tail. I'm gonna put this on the left front side. And I'm probably not going to start on the back, but so now we know where I'm starting from. She had also sent me this shell one that I'm using as like a regular um, stitch marker that I love. I'm, you know, Nick California, I love beachy crap, and so, sorry, I shouldn't say crap. A shell, a mermaid tail, ocean things, it's really my jam. Anyways, that is the Cal cardigan so far. I didn't tell you any of the stats <laughs> for the Cal cardigan. So let me tell you that really quickly. Um, I've got my journal page here. So I am knitting size four. One thing that I like about the pattern, the way that it's written, is each size is color coded. So there's like a chart, in some cases to show you know how many stitches you should have um, and in the actual pattern instructions as well you know when it says like knit X number of stitches and they're all lined up based on size they are color-coded so the size that I'm making size 4 they're purple so I wrote purple in here and I needed to do that because the first time I knit this I started looking at the wrong size <laughs> So there's some wonky things going on with the first one that I have, but we're gonna fix that in the second go around. And I am knitting this on five millimeter needles. I'm pretty sure the pattern calls for 4.5, but again, uh, I typically need to go up to meet gauge. I did not gauge swatch. Um, I just knew that I knitted on five millimeters the first time, and so... I figured it would be fine if I knitted on five millimeter needles the second time, so. Okay, let's move on to the next um, whip that I have. I'm so excited about this. You guys aren't even ready. Are you? I, I, I did knit a swatch for this one, okay? Do you know what it is? I'm sure everyone knows what this is. I'm knitting the Ingrid Sweater by Petite Knit. Look at my swatch! It looks so good! Uh, I'm so happy with it. Okay, and the yarn that I'm using for this... Guys, this yarn is so good. This is the Treehouse Knits. Um... It's on her Dove DK base, which again is a 100% superwash merino, um, and it's called Harvest Moon, and it's this gorgeous like gray, lavender, purple color. I think it's going to be so pretty. This yarn is the softest like superwash yarn that I have ever knit with. I have knit with a lot of superwash yarn. There's something about this, I don't know if you can tell, look at the, the butt here. Do you see the twist on that yarn? It looks like very rope-like and very plump. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but this is different 
than like the twist that I've seen on other DK weight yarns. And anyways, it's like so smooth and buttery as I'm knitting with it. I'm absolutely loving it. So let me show you my progress so far. This is the front. <laughs> this is it. But this is uh, starting the back panel in double, what does she call it, double moss stitch or double seed stitch. It's the one where it's two rows of knit one, purl one, and then the next two rows are purl one, knit one, opposite. Um, and so I've done the short rows and uh, all the way through this section. The next section that I'm going to start is going to get into this pattern. I think it actually goes this way. So I'm going to do these eyelets and then I'm going to do the uh, cross hatches and then into the 2x2 two two rib. For the back panel, I'm going to start following a chart and I'm just really excited about it. I've been, this pattern came out in 2022 and I have seen so many people knit it. I'm sure you have seen so many people knit it and it's just been on my list to knit since then. And I actually thought I was going to knit this in a different yarn. Um, and then I bought this Harvest Moon, this light purple color was, it was a Treehouse Knits Autumn Tonal, and I was like, oh, that's what I want to knit it in. Um, and it's interesting, so this pattern is interesting because the women's version of the pattern is actually, it actually calls for a DK weight yarn plus a lace weight yarn, so a mohair is what she uses, but the gauge is 20 stitches by 30 rows and there's a men's pattern also uh same same pattern just a men's version that calls for a single strand of dk weight yarn and the gauge is also 20 stitches the row gauge is a little bit off i think it's like 28 rows versus 30 rows so i think um, in talking with a lot of people on Instagram and like actually doing a like deep dive comparison of the two patterns, the men's version calls for using a Sandus Garn Pure Gint, which is a DK weight yarn, but I think it's a heavier DK weight yarn versus what she uses in the women's pattern. Um, I forget which yarn she uses, but it's a lighter weight DK plus the mohair. And so you're getting something those two kind of equal out. I'm using a DK weight yarn and I did swatch this and I was able to reach 20 stitches and my row gauge was actually 32 rows so a little bit more like smaller in terms of row gauge versus what she's getting because it is a smaller weight yarn technically but I think that's something easy to account for in terms of just length you know I can lengthen in these two by two rib sections if I need to. We'll just we'll just keep a keep an eye out. We'll watch out for the length if it needs to be different. Um, but I'm I'm really happy with it so far. So I am using a DK weight yarn, even though the pattern calls for a worsted. And I think it's fine. I am happier. I would prefer to use a DK weight yarn just so the pattern is not the the final garment is not as thick, not as dense. It'll be way more wearable for me in Southern California as a DK weight yarn. Uh, pretty much only in winter, <laughs> but <laughs> that is besides the point. So the needle sizes that I'm using, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter needle for the body. I will use a 4 millimeter needle for the body ribbing and the sleeve ribbing, and then I'll do a 3.5 millimeter needle needle for the neck ribbing. And I am knitting the size XL. It's the fifth size in the pattern and it corresponds to a finished bust size circumference of 50.5 inches. So here's my journal page on it so far. I've just got all that info and yeah I'm really excited. Oh this also <laughs> was one of the patterns on my Make 9. 
So there we go. We've uh, we've got one cast on, one of nine cast on, which is really good, really good. So I'm going to put a progress keeper on this so we can see how it grows. I'm gonna use this diamond crystal. This one I actually um, know was from Whitney Marie Anderson. I, that I also got from the SoCal Fiber Fair. So I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle. There we go. I actually wanna put something else on here because I've just been using this gold lightning bulb, light bulb, <laughs> light bulb stitch marker to denote uh, the front side of my work. And um, I just want something a little bit more exciting. So I'm gonna put this flower on. Um, I, I don't remember where I got this one from. This might be from Dusty Yarn Co. But there we go. Front of the work and my actual progress. Yay. Okay. I am so excited about this one. I've seen so many people make it and it like looks good on everyone. So I'm really hopeful that this is gonna be a standout piece for me. I've got like four more things I want to talk to you about but these are going into like more of my winter knitting plans. I wanted to film a whole like winter knitting plans video but at this point we're almost halfway through January and about a third of the way through winter. I really should have done this you know <laughs> December 21st when winter started but there was a lot going on at the time. So I'm just gonna chat to you uh, about more of my winter knitting plans uh, going forward. So let me talk to you about this. It's hot pink. Um, I want to cast on the Cove sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl using this amazing hot pink magenta yarn from Dusty Yarn Co. This is the colorway uh, Bougainvillea. And um, this is their classic fingering 100% superwash merino four ply held together with their classic Surrey lace. It's a 75% baby Surrey alpaca and 25% silk. And this, I swatched for this as well. It's so soft. I wish you could feel how soft this is. It won't focus because it's too soft and too fluffy. There we go. It's really, really soft. So I would love to get this on the needles also just so that I have like a soft fuzzy project. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a uh, winter knitting plan number, well, three, I guess, after the two that I already have on the needles. And the Cove sweater is also on my Make 9. So I uh, want to get that cast on. And next up, I would like to knit another Oslo hat for a friend. This yarn is Paisley Knits. Uh, Poseidon from her Greek Gods collection in her Krabby DK base. Again, it's 100% superwash merino. And I wanted, I really wanted this to be like a holiday gift knit, but I didn't have enough time to knit it. So um, this is going to be for a friend, another Oslo hat. This one will be interesting because this is already a DK weight base, so I'm not going to hold two fingering strands together. So I'll have to make sure, the last time I did one just in DK, I knit it for my husband, and it was a little, like the gauge wasn't thick enough, stiff, stiff enough, and it's kind of a floppy hat. So I'm going to go down a uh, needle size, and I'll just need to make sure that the um, stitch count is big enough so that it matches like the large pattern size. So plan number four, I think I said. <laughs> um, 
I would like to cast on a pair of fingerless mitts. This is Ireland yarn. Um, this is from the Zwart Bulls sheep farm that we visited in Ireland. This is actually their Kriya baby alpaca yarn. So they've got, you know, their flock, their herd of Zwart Bulls sheep, and then they also have three alpacas on site that are like, she called them the, the guardians, the sentinels of the flock. They like keep the flock in line but they were so cute um i got kissed on the forehead by one of the alpacas and so i've got a 50 gram little hank here that i would love to knit up some fingering weight or some it's dk i'd love to knit up some fingerless mitts <laughs> okay and then lastly i made this swatch with more of my ireland yarn from Cushendale Woolen Mills. I've got, this is three different colors, okay? This is uh, Cardinal, I think. I've got like a lilac and then I've got white. I knit up the swatch in white um, because I didn't want to use up too much of the cone. It's a 500 gram cone. And I really like stressed out for like a good week. <laughs> uh last week about this yarn and this swatch because this color is amazing this like purple pink magenta color I love it so much but I want to knit something that's going to be wearable I don't want to just knit something that's like fun that I'll never wear so I think I have finally decided that I would like to knit a, another cumulus blouse with this by Petite Knit at like a more open gauge. Um, I knit this swatch on 3.75 millimeter needles, I think, and it's really dense, and I want something at like a, a more open gauge, and I think that'll be really fun. So, I don't know when I'm gonna re-swatch for this and cast this one on, but it is a plan, and I would like to at least have this done before we go back to Ireland in October. Yes, we're going back to Ireland. I'm so excited. If you're interested in coming with us, we still have uh, a, f a good number of spots open for knitters and a couple non-knitter spots. So I will have all of the information on the itinerary, travel info, and pricing in the description box down below for you also to check that out. You can come with us. You can get your own cone of Cushendale Mohair Boucle yarn and more and your your baby alpaca yarn from the sheep farm we're going back there so all right that's those are my like future winter knitting plans actually there's probably more but i'm waiting for uh yarn to arrive for that one so we'll talk about that when that gets here um, but yeah, that's what we've got going on here over at, uh, Knit California <laughs> house. <laughs> um, a lot of knitting. One thing I will talk about and say is that I have pretty much in 2023 been a mostly monogamous knitter, especially when it comes to sweater projects. I typically, typically only have one sweater project on the needles at one time. And right now I have two and soon to be three, potentially four, <laughs> plus a whole blanket. Um, so I'm trying out this whole non-monogamous knitting thing and the way I'm doing this is like in my planner I'm writing down uh, for each week like what sections of each project I want to get knit up and I'm just trying to uh, hit those goals each week we'll see how long this lasts we'll see if I start getting too stressed out about it and we'll see if I really just crave uh, knitting on one project over another and if we do and it doesn't become fun anymore, we're gonna switch up how we're doing things. And by we, I mean me, so. <sighs> Come back, I'll keep you posted in our next episode. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Go follow me over on Instagram, at Nick California, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!